In this video, I want to give some more intuition as to maximum likelihood in the context of GLM by contrasting two possible models. One is called the unconstrained or the saturated model, and the other is the constraint or the regular model. Now, both models assume the same assumptions as mentioned in a previous video, mainly that the observations of the some random response variable are independent, that they come from some exponential family distribution, and that there is a relation between the means of the distribution to some predictor variable x. Now, in both models, we have some points, yeah? And we assume they are related to some predictor variable x. The regular model is the model we've seen so far. It tries to fit some linear line or other model to the points. And it does it by the method of maximum likelihood. So here it's mu equal x transpose beta. And what it basically says is that each point on this line is the mean of, in the normal case, uh, normal distribution. Yeah, so it looks something like this. With this is the mean, the mean, the mean. Here it will be like this, and this is the mean. And we get our betas, we get the betas that maximize the overall likelihood uh, of all those means. Basically, to get this point over here, this x, then under the assumption that the mean is here, there is some likelihood, there is some probability that we get a point here. And we use this likelihood and we multiply all this likelihood and then we take the log of it and we maximize. So this is basically how we get the betas. But in the saturated model, we focus all the means exactly on the points. So, obviously, this is the highest possible likelihood, highest possible probability to get these points under the assumption that they really do come from this distribution, in this case, a normal distribution. So this is the maximum likelihood that is ever possible. You are not constraining yourself to some line that has to pass or some other structure. You're just putting the probability on the points. And you can think of it as if we are fitting some high order polynomial of the axes to the data. So it's as if we are doing something like this. Yeah, we are overfitting some uh, model to these points. So we have some maximum likelihood for that point. And of course, if we constrain our model to be just a linear one or a low order polynomial, we won't be able to pass through all the points anymore. And we would get some lower likelihood. So what the method of maximum likelihood does in the context of GLM is to find the maximized likelihood that is possible under some constrained model, under this model over here. So we say we want, let's say, uh, some linear line, yeah? So we try to find a linear line that maximizes these values over here, yeah? That is as close as possible to the center, to the maximum likelihood of each observation. And you can think of the points as if they are asserting some pressure, like each point is trying to uh, pull the line towards it, yeah? So that the center of the line, that the line will pass exactly um, on the point and as such will maximize the likelihood of that point. And actually the difference between this likelihood over here yeah, and the likelihood over here. Yeah, so this point, yeah, it has likelihood under the saturated model, which is the highest possible uh, likelihood that it can have, at least for the normal case. And it also has 
some value here in blue. So it has a red value. It has, let's say, T, uh, which gives the highest likelihood of the saturated model. And it has another value, let's call it T prime, which gives the likelihood under this model, under here. The difference between the log likelihood of these two models, the log likelihood of the saturated model minus the log likelihood of the regular model, is a quantity which is called the unit de deviance. And we will talk about it in a future video. Now, one possible question, which I, I fortunately don't have a good answer to, is say we have this point, but say that our distribution, it's not normal, it's not a symmetric distribution, but rather it's some skewed distribution. So the question is, why use the means? Why um, put the mean of this distribution? Yeah, if we have some skewed distribution, where, where should we put it? Should we put the mean of this distribution on this point, or should we put the mode of the distribution on this point? And the way GLM works is that you always put the mean, and we will also see in, in the upcoming videos that the math works out for the mean. But yeah, I have to say I'm not really sure why that is. I mean, for skewed distribution, it seems more likely that you would want to put the mode of the distribution, this point. And we know that, let's say, if this is the mode, then the mean will be somewhere maybe here. Yeah. So if we would put it where the mean, this would look maybe something more like this. Yeah. And now it's not in the mode anymore. Yeah, but this is a question that for now I really don't have a good answer to. And I tried to find an answer to it. and couldn't really find. And this is just the way the GLM works so far, unless someone go ahead and changes it. So I hope this gives a little bit more intuition as to what maximum likelihood is doing in GLM context. And see you in the next video.